didn't know you were there. This is Steve Dillon with this week's video blog. And this week we're going to be doing some things that are very close to my heart. It's about fifes. Now, um, for those who don't know what a fife is, this is basically a fife. It's a uh, no-keyed flute. Basically, a range of the piccolo. They come in various keys. They come in D, C, and B flat, and I have seen them in A and G. Now, they usually just have six holes. They're made out of wood, various types of wood. And what we have here today is some uh, very historic instruments. First off, let me say this. The fife, be, uh, it is a folk instrument, basically, used in music, but it was also used for in the military for signaling, basically before the bugles became uh, popular. Uh, in the 18th century, uh, the fife was used with the armies to maneuver them and also to be the alarm clock. The fifers and drummers would basically have certain tunes that would get the, the soldiers up in the morning, call them for rations, send them off to work. They had uh, a tune that they played to drum the people out of camp if they were kicking you out of camp. Also to put you to bed at night and for the tavern keepers to turn off the taps. Uh, fifers and drummers were found on the battlefield in some of the battles during the revolution, uh, basically playing uh, pieces to maneuver the troops. They might play a, a, an advance or a retreat. Now what we have today in front of you is some various fifes, both modern and ancient. These right here, this being probably the oldest of the fifes, is made by Thomas Cusack, whose dates were uh, the early 18th century until around 1813. It was a family of makers in London. This, these next two here, now this one, was, the Cusack was in C, made of boxwood. These next two are made of boxwood. They're made by George Astor of London, brother of the famous Astor from America. Uh, and a little known fact is when Astor, John Jacob Astor came to America, he landed in Baltimore and what did he have in his luggage to start his fortune? Two flutes. Now, this one happens to be in B flat, and this one happens to be in A, and they're rather, rather large compared to modern fifes. If I showed a modern fife, now this is a Ferrari fife, they're rather larger than the Ferraris in diameter. Okay? These next two fifes were made by a Boston maker, and, and they, they, they are the earliest fifes that we have in existence made by an American woodwind maker. They were both made by uh, William Callender up in Boston. William Callender, from what we read in his obituary, helped pull the dead off the field at Bunker Hill. He was an ivory turner. And he also probably had one of the foremost earliest music stores that we can document. Callender's Music Store up in Boston. Now these are two fives made by him. A C and a B flat. Now, these other fives here are reproductions. Now, this little known fact about me is I make replica 18th century fives. Now, this is not one. This is the first fife I ever made, and it basically stays on display in my office. This is one of my reproductions, 18th century fife. It's made out of black ebony. I basically made it off the Cusack Fife. And the interesting thing is they both have seam ferrules. The ferrules on the ends have seams on them. And how that was done is in the old days they took a piece of flat brass, they bent it over a mandrel or, or some type of wooden diameter and then seamed it. This other Fife is another reproduction of mine. This is made out of plum wood. This is a B-flat, but I use modern fingerings. Now, see, one of the things is, even though the fife is a very simple instrument, around the 18, late 1860s, 1870s, the fingering pattern changed from the earlier patterns. This is the earlier pattern of the Cusack, and this is a Ferrari. As you can see, the hole patterns are different, where some holes are larger than others. So modern day fifers normally use this whole pattern. If you're going to be authentic, you're going to use this type of pattern 
this is a more of a pattern of a woodwind maker. The uh, aster here, they're basically very, the holes are almost the same where this Cusack, there is a little bit of difference in the diameter of the holes. Although the Fife, um, a lot of people are not familiar with Fifers in this day and age. I will say this, before I got involved in this, I didn't know that to the extent that uh, people played these. I went to a, a, what they call a muster up in Deep River, Connecticut a few years ago, and there was a thousand fifers and drummers that descended on this place, and they had a really good time. They had a parade of about 70 fife and drum corps, and it's really um, a movement that you really don't see in the norm, normal music world, but it exists and it is very popular. I probably have the largest collection in private hands of, of historic fifes. My collection right now numbers around 250, and the earliest, as I said, uh, dates back to the 18th century. And another little known fact is there is no Revolutionary War fife used by the Continental Army in any collections that I have been able to find up to this date that we can 100% say that was used in the Revolution. There are fifes that are supposedly have used in the Revolution. Uh, the, these, uh, this Cusack might have been used in the Revolution, but we don't know 100% because nothing really survives. After the war, General Washington let the fifers and drummers take their instruments home. So in those days, things got used till they were used up. So we don't have any 100% documented uh, fife in collections as of today. Thank you very much, and again, if you enjoy these, just let us know. Thank you.